The question that I'm about to discuss today is asked in so many companies from big MNCs like Google to startups like Cast24 in ReactJS interviews. And ever since I discussed a beginner version of this question in my Cast24 interview video, I have received hundreds of messages from you all telling me how many times you have encountered this question in different different companies. So that's why in today's video, I'm gonna discuss both beginner and the more advanced variation of this question. So stick to the very end of this video because there's a very high chance that you may encounter this question in your tomorrow's front-end interview. So let me quickly discuss our problem statement over here. So the interviewer has asked us to prepare a JSON data which we can render this way. We can have a root folder inside of which we can have multiple folders and files nested deeply inside one another. So we are supposed to render them and it, it can be infinite. So as you can see over here, the UI looks just like this. So just ignore this plus folder and plus file for now. I'm just discussing the basic version of this question that is asked in the most of the interviews, most of the beginner interviews. So as you can see, when we open this, we have two folders, one file. If you open this folder, we have more folders and files, and we have more files inside of this folder. And similarly, if we open this SRC folder, we have more files inside of it. So we are supposed to prepare such a JSON and a UI, which can adapt to one another infinitely. And as I mentioned, this is the beginner version of this question that is asked in most of the interviews. But in more advanced interviews, what interviewers ask you to do is, they ask you to have two buttons over here, one for folder, one for file, by using which we can create a new file or folder. So if I click on this plus folder, you can see this UI looks just like VS code. When we click outside of it, you can see it's gone. If we click on file, yep, you can see the file icon over here. We can enter the file name. So if I let's say new.js and press enter, Yep, new file has been created over here. Similarly for the folder as well, press enter. Yep, the folder has been created. And we have to take care of all of those use cases that if we click on it and we click outside of it, no new item will be created. If similarly, if I click on file and click outside of it, no new item was created. So this is basically a clone of VS Code sidebar. And this insert functionality in this problem is very important. And you will soon know why as we go along in this video. So the interviewer asked me to open code sandbox and create a new React JS app. So I'm gonna click on this create button and click on this react. So there we go. We have initialized a new React JS app. Let me remove everything inside of this. Now, first step that I would like to do is prepare the JSON for our app, right? So I'm gonna create a new folder over here. And as I mentioned in my previous video, your file structure, your clean coding abilities, all of these are measured during these interviews. I'm gonna create a new folder called data. And inside of this, I'm gonna create a new file called folder data.js. Because the way you code during these coding interviews shows how well, you can create a scalable application and a code that others developer can read as well. So now inside of it, I've actually prepared a JSON already. So I'm gonna import it and then I'm gonna explain. So here's the JSON that I prepared during the interview. I have added a key for ID, for name, for checking if this is a folder or not and then the items which will contain more files and folder nested inside of this object. Now, if you go inside of this, you can see we have similar pattern again, ID, name is folder. So this one is a folder. Okay, this one, so this one is not a folder, its folder is false. And similarly, other files and folders. So this is just the dummy data that I've created that I showed you at the beginning. This was the data. So now let's go on and render this. At first, this might seem a little easy, but it's gonna use a very important data structure concept. So if I go to app.js, I'm gonna create a new state for our data. So use state. And you can see I've imported use state from React. So what use state does is it returns us two things inside of this array. It return, returns us the actual state or the variable, which I'm gonna name explorer data. And other variable is to change that state. So set explorer data. And this right over here takes the initial value of our state. So initial value will be this thing, explorer. So let me import this real quick import explorer from data folder data cool and i'm going to provide it to this use state let's check if this is working fine i'm going to console log this let's check the console yep we got all of the json data over here now what i'm going to do for rendering all of those folders and files i'm going to create another component called folder.js so for that component, I'm going to create a new folder called components. Again, you don't have to do this, but this shows that you can write a clean and more understandable code. 
And as you can see, we have the similar UI over here as well. When you click on new file, it's gonna add this new file folder. If you create, uh, create directory, it's gonna add this folder icon over here. So this is the exact UI that we are supposed to create. So I'm gonna create file called folder.js. And now inside of this, I'm gonna create a new component called folder. And this will take a few params. So I'm gonna just leave this curly brace open over here. This will destructure all of the params that we sent to this component. I'm gonna discuss that in depth when we import this component. Inside of this simply, I'm just gonna return a div for now. Saying, hello. Cool. Now let's import this. But we are supposed to export this as well. Export default folder. Now inside of our app.js, inside of this uh, dev, I'm gonna import that folder. As you can see, it has been imported, auto imported. And now I'm gonna send this explorer data to this folder component. So I'm gonna say explorer equals explorer data. So this basically we are passing down this state as a prop. So this is a very important interview question as well in React.js interviews, what is the difference between a state and a prop? So you can explain it this way. So we are passing down this variable and in, when we go inside this folder, there are two ways to receive it over here. Either we can write props and then we can destructure this prop or we can directly destructure it like this and we can receive this explorer data. Let me just console log it over here quickly just to see if it's working fine. Let me remove that from here. Let me clear this out and yeah, this is being rendered. Awesome. Now inside of our folder.js, let's start creating our UI. Also, there are some default styling, I believe. Let me remove them real quick. So before printing the complete folder structure of complete folder tree, I'm just gonna print one level first because this is what I recommend. You should take the problem and you should break it down into several small, small parts and then tackle one problem at a time. So I'm just gonna give, give this uh, some basic style first of margin top to be five pixels. And now inside of this, I'm gonna have another div which will contain our explorer's name or our first file or folder name. So I'm gonna say explorer dot name let's see yep root is printed over here cool and also since this is a folder i'm just gonna provide this a folder icon now after this we're gonna have to print everything that is inside of this folder that is inside of this one single level also i'm gonna wrap this inside of a span because inside of this div we're gonna have more things like buttons so i'm just gonna take care of that later but I'll just add it inside of a span. Now below this div, I'm gonna have another div inside of which we're gonna render all of the items. So as you can see inside of this, we have three items. So we're gonna render that over here. So div. And I'm gonna say explorer.items.map. And inside of this, we're gonna simply say, so if you see, this item has a similar data structure as the parent, right? So inside of this, this these also have name, ID, and is folder. So I'm just gonna print the name for now. Explore, I mean, sorry, not explorer. So I'm just gonna give this name of exp and I'll say exp.name. Awesome, so yeah, we you can see over here, we have all of these three, first public, then src, and then package.json. All of these three items have been rendered over here. So this is just the folder that we have rendered, right? But what if this first one was a file, then what would we do? So before this, I'm gonna put a check. If explorer dot is folder, only then we're gonna print this, else, we're gonna add a else after this, return, another span with the icon of a file. So how you can get these icons is, you can press Windows key plus semicolon if you're using a Windows laptop or computer. And in Mac, you can press the options key. So over here, I'm just gonna say, yeah, this is the file icon. I'll say explorer dot name, same thing. This should be wrapped inside of a curly brace, cool. So we have rendered the first level. 
Also, I'm just gonna give these both div some class name folder. And this is gonna have class name of. So okay, fine. So our first problem was to render at least one level of this JSON, right? Now our second problem is when we click on it, this should hide, and when we click on it, it should show, right? So for that, I'll create simply a new state over here by importing user state, and I'm gonna name it expand and set expand by default this will be false so it will be hidden over here i'm just gonna say style and i'm gonna give this a display style and i'm gonna check if expand is true then this should be display block else this should be display none like that so currently it was false so it got hidden and whenever we click on this folder icon we should make it true so on click, set expand to true. Let's see. Awesome. So this is working fine. Also, this should be true. This should be not expand so that we can close it when we click on it. So yep, yeah, awesome. This is working fine. So great. Our second problem is also being taken care of. Also, we're supposed to indent it to a little bit right side. So I'm just gonna give this some padding right of 25. Oh, sorry, padding left, my bad. Yep, that's right. So now you might be thinking, how are we gonna render it infinitely, right? And that is exactly what I thought during the interview that what am I gonna do now? So I thought, okay, let's try calling this component again. Also, I was a fresher back then, by the way, so I had no idea how am I gonna do this. So I thought, okay, let's try to call this folder again. So what I did was, so I called this folder over here and this needed this explorer prop. So I had the explorer and I provided it with this exp because this is the same UI as this component is rendering, right? So I thought maybe this will work. Let's try to provide this. So I did. And when I opened this, I was in a complete shock. I was like, how the f did I do that? So pretty cool. So the only thing that's left over here is some styling problems, some styling issues over here. That's not a big deal. I'll be able to solve that. So I was really happy. And I guess that was the end of that interview. Let me just style these quickly first. Also, I need to provide the key over here. So key will be exp.id. I'm gonna go to styles.css and I'm not gonna go much in depth into the styles because this is not about that. This is more about the functionality. So let me just quickly add these styles. So here it is, here's some of the basic style that I've added. I've added some folder styles with some background color, display flex, justify content space between because we're gonna have a button that's gonna have on the sides of this dev. So that's why I've added justify content space between some padding, some width, some cursor pointer, right? And for this particular root text, I've added the span styling for, the mar for some margin, which is some left, right, and bottom mar styles. And for the files, I've just added display flex and flex direction column so that we can see all of them one below the other and some margin and some padding. And now, now is the time for the real deal. Now it's time to move to the advanced functionality. Now it's time to create two buttons and the functionality for creating a new file or folder. But before that, if you're preparing for a front-end interview and you would like me to help you in a front-end interview preparation, you can click the link in the description down below and book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I'm gonna give you proper roadmap, tips, tricks, and a lot of valuable resources that will help you tackle your front-end interviews. And also, if you feel like you're already prepared for a front-end interview, but you would like to have a mock interview with me, click the link in the description down below and book a call with me and hurry because there are very limited slots. All right, now after this explorer.name, I'm gonna add two buttons. First one will be for adding the file and other one will be for adding a folder. So I'm gonna have a dev. And so this, I'm gonna have two buttons. First one will say folder plus, and other will say file plus. Or I think you can add uh, some icon over here as well. That'll probably look better, but I'm just gonna go with this. Let me just style them real quick and get that out of the way. I'm just gonna add some font size and some background color, that's all. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new state, use state and this will be for showing or hiding our input box so i'm just gonna say show 
input oops not over here and you may have noticed i'm putting this s capital over here for whenever i'm writing set show or like set something because it's a good coding convention to write it this way and the initial state will be it's gonna have two things it's gonna have an object so it's gonna be visible so by default it's obviously not going to be visible so visible false and if it's a folder or file so is folder and i'm just gonna say null by default because obviously when we click on this we are supposed to track if we are adding a folder or a file right so that's why this uh, key now whenever we click on any of these so first of all there's one big issue over here that this is opening this up we don't want that so what i'm gonna do is i mean we do want that but we want that to be opened in our way so i'm just gonna add a stop propagation on these buttons so i'm just gonna create a new function over here const handle new folder and this will take a event and i'm gonna say e dot stop propagation and trigger it on click of these so on click say handle new folder and i'm just gonna pass the event from here to there then this file as well so yeah this is not uh, expanding this anymore great so now what i'm gonna do inside of this handle new folder first of all i'm gonna say set show input visible is going to be true because we want our input box to show and if this is a folder or not we are supposed to get this from there so i'm gonna add this is folder variable and in folders case i'm gonna say it's true and in files case i'm gonna say it's false so now we're supposed to add an input field actually over here right inside of the folder that we are supposed to add a file or a folder so i'm gonna go inside of this div over here and above this i'm gonna add a condition show input dot visible if this is true and inside of this i'm gonna add a div with the class name of input container and inside of that we're gonna have an icon to check right so if i click on this you're gonna see that we are gonna have a folder icon if you click on the file we're gonna have a file icon so over here we're gonna check if show input dot is folder then we're gonna show the folder else we're gonna show the file and below this we're gonna have an input tag with the class name of input container underscore input let's try to click on this oh okay we so we are not opening it by default currently so if i click on this it's gonna add a folder if i click on this it's gonna add a file right and also we're supposed to add this functionality that whenever we click on this this should come up with focus inside of this uh, input tag and when we click out of it this sh should disappear because obviously we didn't save the file right the file will only be saved when we click enter so let's take care of that so over here i'm gonna say first of all auto focus so that this comes in the focus let me just put the type as well first and on blur so whenever we click outside of it this should go away let me just take care of this functionality first so on blur we're gonna say set show input and i'm gonna say whatever that's inside of it so show input and i'm gonna change visibility to false like that so if i click on file yep you can see it the focus is inside of it when we click outside of it it's gone so outside it's gone click on it it's there outside it's gone awesome and also we're supposed to add some styling to this and whenever we if, if this is closed when we click on this it should open and show us this input tag so over here i'm gonna say set expand to true let's see this works we click on it yep it expands it and shows us our input field great let me just add some basic styling for this so so input container will be display flex align items to the center and gap of five pixels between them so between these some for the span i'm gonna add some margin top so that this gap looks better and for our actual input i'm just gonna add some basic margin padding and display properties that's all so cool let's get back to our app and again as i mentioned i'm not going very in depth in this css it's because this is not the whole point of this app the interviewer was not evaluating me on my designing skills he was evaluating me on my logical skills now whenever i press enter I should be able to add a new folder over here. 
So let me just create a new function for this first. So const add new folder or maybe better naming will be on add folder. I'm gonna take an event over here and I'm gonna check for the enter event. So how do we check for the enter event? So I'll say if e dot key code, if the key code is 13, that means that's enter. And we have something inside of that input field. So e dot target dot value. Only then we're supposed to do whatever we are supposed to do. So first thing first, uh, we are supposed to close this input tag, right? So I'm just gonna say set show input and take whatever that was already inside of it. And I'm gonna say visible to false. But uh, before this, before doing this, also I put this in parenthesis. This should be in the curly braces. Before this, we have to add the add logic over here, then this thing. So let's try it out. If I press on this and enter something and press enter, hmm, nothing happened. Oh, obviously, because we are not calling it over here. So I'm supposed to say on key down, I'm gonna call this on add folder. Okay, let's try that again. If I enter something, press enter, cool, that's gone. If I didn't enter anything, press enter, nothing will happen. If I uh, click outside, then it will go away. All right, so that is all for our basic functionality and our UI. Now is the most important part and that is writing the algorithm for creating this logic. And for adding that functionality, I'm gonna create a custom hook. Yes, I'm gonna show you how you can create a logic and add it inside of your own custom hook and then use it inside of your app. All right, pause. If you're not yet following me on Twitter, go to twitter.com slash piyush underscore eon or click the link in the description down below and hit that follow button right now. I'm waiting for you. I'm still waiting. Okay, fine, let's continue with the video. So first of all, let's discuss what's gonna happen over here. So over here, as you can see, we have this root and we have an array of items inside of it, right? And then when we click on any of this item or a folder item, we have more items inside of it. So this is basically a tree data structure, right? We can't just iterate on it in a linear way and add wherever we want to add it. So this is going to require some tree traversing algorithm. And whenever we find that particular node, we are supposed to add our element inside of that particular node. So let's see, I'm just gonna start easy now just by creating a folder hooks. And inside this folder, I'm gonna add a new file called use traverse3.js and inside this I'm gonna create our hook and I'm gonna name this hook use traverse tree and as you might know that all of our hooks should start with this use keyword so that's why I'm using this use keyword over here and then I'm supposed to export it export default use traverse tree just like that and now this hook will contain another function called insert node. So function insert node. And this is gonna be empty for now. And I'm gonna return this insert node just like that. So that we can, if we need to create more such functions, we can create it over here. Now, how many things is this insert node going to take? First of all, this is going to take our complete tree. It is going to take the ID of the folder inside of which we are supposed to create a new file or folder. It's gonna take the actual item that is gonna be created. And the fourth thing is, is what type of item is it? Is it a file or a folder? So it's gonna take is folder as well. As we go inside of it, I'm gonna first check. Is the very first node the place that we are supposed to add our new item? So this is me checking for the edge cases. So I will say if tree dot ID is equals to folder ID. And also if this is a folder or not, tree dot is folder. If it's a folder only, then we are supposed to insert anything inside of it, right? And obviously this is not possible when we see our UI, we don't have any folder or file icon in our file, but just in case any drunk developer develops such a feature that we are supposed to add it inside of a file as well. So we, we should take care of all of that thing inside of our logic. So if that's the case, if we are supposed to add this inside of our root, then we're gonna simply say tree dot items 
dot unshift. So what is this unshift? So unshift is just like push. Push adds the item at the very last, but unshift adds it at the very first place. So inside of this, I'm going to have an ID, a name, is folder, and the items array. So the ID for now, I feel like you should use something like UUID to create a unique ID or whatever you prefer. But for now, for the interview sake, what I did, I used new date because it's going to give me uh, some unique number. So new date dot get time like that. And name is obviously this item that we're supposed to create just like that. So this will work for one level. Let's just go and test this out before moving forward. So I'm going to go to my app.js. I'm going to call that hook over here. Use traverse tree. And as we already know, it's going to provide us insert node. Right. So this is what we're supposed to use over here. Now I'm going to create a function over here for inserting the node, which I'm going to in turn send to our folder component. So I'm going to say const handle insert node. And this will take few things. It's going to first take a folder ID. It's going to take item and it's going to take if it's a folder or not. And inside this, we're going to simply say const final tree is equals insert node. And we, as we already know, insert node takes two, four things. So first one is the actual tree. That is our explorer data. Second is going to be, and all of these three, simply, just like that. And then when we have our updated tree, don't worry if you're not able to understand this properly, I'm just gonna go through it once again after I'm done with this. So after we have our final tree, we're gonna update our original tree. Final tree, just like that. What's wrong with this? Traverse tree is not defined. Okay, we haven't imported it. Yeah, import traverse tree from hooks, great. Hmm, let's pass this function down to our folder component like that inside of the folder. I'm going to receive that. And now wherever we are supposed to add the logic, I'm going to call it with those three things. First folder ID. So current folder ID is explorer dot ID. And then the current item that is E dot target dot value. And then the is folder if it's a folder or not. So that will be inside of over here. Show input dot is folder. Hmm. I think this, this should work. Let's see. Let's test this out for the root. I'm just going to test it out first because obviously we don't have any other use case right now. So for this, I'm just going to say hello, press enter. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think inside of it, I was also supposed to return. Yeah. Inside of this function. Yeah. I was supposed to return the complete tree. So I modified the tree, right? So I was also supposed to return the tree. So that's why I think that's gave this error. Let's, let's test it out to demo dot JS enter. Oh, awesome. It's working. So hello, enter fine. That work. Let's create it inside of this folder. Hi, press enter. No, obviously this is not going to work because this is a nested folder, right? And we didn't write the logic for the nested folder yet. So let's go inside of our use traverse tree again. And after this logic and this return will go inside of over here, not here, because this is only satisfying this condition, right? Only the first one. Now, after this, I'm going to loop through the complete remaining tree and I'm going to follow an algorithm called depth first search. So what's depth first search? It's going to take the root folder first, then it's going to go inside this public folder, then it's going to go inside this public nested and it's going to check all of these. If it doesn't find that, then it's going to come out. It's going to go inside this SRC. It's going to check all of its files. So one by one, it's going to go inside the depth of this tree and check each and every file or folder that if it's ma if it matches with the ID of this folder ID. And right over here, I want to talk to those people who always say that no DS is not used in the real world and we don't use DS in the development in our daily basis. So here's the live example for you all that DS is indeed used while developing such features. So now whenever someone tells you that DS is not used in real world, just show them this example. So all right, after this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and I'm going to loop through all of its child. So I'm going to say 
directory dot items dot map i'm gonna take the object over here and i'm gonna say return and what i'll do over here is since i'm supposed to loop through all of these so this will just be one iteration right only for this one but i want iteration for each and every one of them so what i'll do is i'm gonna recursively call this insert node i'm gonna call this insert node again so what's gonna happen then is just similar to what we did to our tree so it's gonna call this insert node on this public folder then now then when we go inside this public folder it's the same story now this tree will be just this part over here only this part will be the part of this tree variable so then it will it's gonna go inside of it and it's gonna check okay tree dot id equals to folder dot id are we supposed to insert it inside of this public folder is if that's the case then we're gonna insert it and return the tree if that's not the case then again it's gonna come over here and it's gonna make this tree as its primary tree and then it's gonna check and so on so it is this this cycle is gonna repeat itself until this finds its destination and adds the file inside of that place or folder so i'm gonna say insert node and i'll add object folder id because object will be this one and this is what we're supposed to send it inside of it right so object folder id and folder id is just going to be the same obviously every time so we're going to pass it uh, in each iteration the item and if it's folder or not just like that and we need all of this result to be stored inside of a variable right so i'm just going to create a variable called latest node and after each and every iteration we're gonna return this latest node after let's say if this had the folder id that we're looking for so what we're gonna do we're gonna modify it and we're gonna return it again so we're gonna say return latest node but the problem over here is this latest node is an array so as you can see over here tree dot items dot map also i'm supposed to assign this latest node so latest node is an array right but our original data structure was an object so what this will return to us is just this part um, inside of the data just this items part and not the name and is folder and id of the parent so what we're supposed to do is so it's not returning us this part right we're supposed to say our tree the original tree and then inside the items we're gonna add the latest node if you didn't understand let me just explain it once again for each and every iteration let's say if you are inside this root folder we're just gonna check the name of the root folder over here and for its children's we're gonna loop through this items over here and obviously this since this is a map this is going to return as an array so i uh, will take that array we're gonna add it inside of the items because it's an high chance that it may have found it inside of this items variable and that's why i'm updating this item so yeah i think that's what it is let's test this out let me go inside this public folder click on over here i'll say new folder press enter handle insert node is not a function okay i think we are supposed to yeah obviously since we are passing it down from app.js to our folder.js we are every time supposed to pass it back to the folder right so we are calling folder over here so we're gonna have to pass it right over here else it won't detect it okay now let's try it out if i click on over here say hello press enter awesome so this is working absolutely fine let's try to add the file new file new file.js enter great everything is working fine as expected and that is it for our question now i have some homework for you so if you uh, see over here we can add the files and folders but we cannot delete it right or we cannot update this uh, name of the file or folder right so what i want you to do i want you to have an update and delete icon over here and then i want you to add the functionality inside of this custom hook so just create delete node similar to this in insert node and same for update like this and obviously you're supposed to export it over here as well so this is one homework and the other homework is that this algorithm is not perfect this can be optimized by using dynamic programming so i mean this is not the absolute compulsory task for you but if you get a chance i would highly recommend you go and 
try to optimize this algorithm by using dynamic programming. And let the others know in the comments down below how you added these functionality. And if you would like for me to create a part two for this video where I explain this dynamic programming algorithm for this insert node and this delete and update functionality, I'm gonna need 1000 likes on this video for that. If you all are able to do this, I'm gonna release a part two for this video. And also click the link in the description if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. And if you want to access this complete playlist, the complete machine coding interview series playlist link will be in the description down below as well.